In the year 2016, the streets of Sydney were stained with a series of crimes so calculated, so ruthless, they sent shockwaves through the city's core. The mastermind, a figure known only as Abs or the Boss, Abu Zar Sultani, an MBA student by day, a kingpin of the underworld by night. Under the cover of darkness, a war unfolded. A war not of nations, but of the streets. A war where the currency was fear and the stakes were life itself. Abs boys, they were called, or the Afghanis Ghi. A group of men bound by loyalty to Sultani, their allegiance as unwavering as their methods were lethal. Over eight harrowing months, a murder spree gripped the city. The victims? Marked for death by a syndicate that moved like a spectre, seen by none, felt by all. Stolen cars, their engines still warm, lay abandoned, burnt out, the only remnants of the hunter's escape. Davy, just thirty, stepped out into the night, a promise to return hanging in the air. Nine shots rang out and the promise was broken, forever. Yilmaz, at 29, approached his car, unaware that it would be his final journey. And Barbaro, at 35, found his fate under the cold glare of his Mercedes headlights. What drove the Sultani Syndicate to cast such a long and dark shadow over Sydney? Join us as we delve into the abyss, seeking answers, seeking truth in the shadows of Sydney's hidden underworld. Abuzar Sultani, a paradox wrapped in an enigma. A man whose voice carried the softness of politeness, whose academic accolades stood in stark contrast to the whispers of the streets. At Macquarie University, he was a star student, his distinctions a testament to a mind sharp and clear. Yet this same mind orchestrated the dark symphony of Sydney's underworld. He walked among us, a beacon of virtue, a teetotaler, Untouched by the vices he peddled, he poured his heart into charities, reaching across oceans to soothe the wounds of his war-torn homeland. But beneath this veneer of generosity, a more sinister role awaited him. His path to infamy began early. A botched ATM heist landed him behind bars, a misstep on a journey that would lead him to darker deeds. Upon his release, the construction industry beckoned, and Joe Autumn emerged as his guide, his mentor. But fate had a cruel twist in store. Tragedy struck in 2013. Joe Autumn, the mentor, the guide, fell victim to an assassin's bullet. The identity of the assailant? Shrouded in mystery, a question left unanswered, a void that beckoned Sultani to step into. Violence begets violence in the unforgiving calculus of the streets. One of Sultani's couriers, caught in the crosshairs of an unknown adversary, bore the scars of treachery. Among the assailants, a young dealer, his name soon to be etched in the annals of the syndicate's retribution. In the heart of Redfern, a trap was set. Sultani, the orchestrator, summoned his enforcers to a unit complex, a stage for the grim theater that was to unfold. With a weapon at his side, he watched a silent sentinel as his decree was carried out. The sentence was swift, the execution brutal. Serbin, lured into the lion's den, found no mercy at the hands of the syndicate. The beating, relentless and savage, left him broken, his fate sealed by the hands that once shook his own. In the aftermath, the darkness had taken its toll and the hospital's sterile lights bore witness to a life extinguished too soon.
In a world where survival hinged on strength in numbers, Sultani sought the sanctuary of brotherhood. The rebels' bikey gang, a name that commanded respect and fear in equal measure, opened its ranks to him. As a nominee, he straddled two worlds, his ambition undimmed by the oath of fealty he swore. Even as he pledged allegiance to the rebels, Sultani's vision for his own empire grew. In Burwood, he laid the foundations for a new chapter, a fortress from which his orders would echo. June 23rd, 2050 marked a day of reckoning within the walls of a Dundas Valley home. It was here that Mark Easter, a man entangled in the syndicate's web, sought an audience with Abu Zar Sultani. The agenda, a proposal steeped in the trade of shadows, drug precursors, the lifeblood of their illicit empire. Easter, his eyes alight with the urgency of his request, implored Sultani to source the components of their trade. But Sultani, wary and calculating, harbored no interest. A debt hung between them, a $50,000 shadow that tainted Easter's words. And so, with a feigned nod to unseen forces, Sultani dismissed the proposal. As the conversation spiralled, Easter's hands danced with his weapon, a menacing ballet. The gun spun, the clip ejected, a silent symphony of intimidation. And then, the gaze that spoke volumes, the crazy eyes that cut through the veneer of civility, the weapon's barrel an unspoken threat. In the crucible of that moment, Sultani acted. With a predator's instinct, he snatched the gun from the table, the first shot shattering the stillness. Easter lunged, desperation etched into his every move, but Sultani, resolute, fired again. Each shot a declaration, a refusal to be cowed, a determination to survive. The aftermath was clinical, cold. Easter's lifeless form, now just a vessel of what once was, found its resting place in a bathtub. Submerged in bleach and ice, a macabre attempt to erase the deed, to cleanse the stain of bloodshed. Three days passed before the land yielded its grim secret. In the northern bushland, a place of natural beauty, lay the remnants of a life taken too soon. The city, once again forced to confront the darkness that lurked within its heart. The aftermath of violence rippled through the syndicate and from those ripples emerged a new leader. Abu Zar Sultani, once a mere player in the game, ascended to the head of the Burwood chapter. His name, once whispered, now roared through the streets of Sydney. By the year 2016, he had forged his own path, breaking away from the rebels. Alongside Siar Munshizada, Mirwais Danishyar and Joshua Baines, he formed a group known by many names, the Afghanis, Abs Boys, Murder Crew 13. Each name a different mask for the same face of terror. In the murky depths of Sydney's underworld, they carved a niche, not just in forces, but contract assassins, their services for hire to the highest bidder. Yet, personal vendettas simmered beneath the surface, driving them to acts of vengeance as much as profit. Their methods were cunning, honed by the necessity of evasion. Stolen cars reborn with new identities, cloned number plates masking their illicit origins. To the untrained eye, nothing amiss. To the syndicate, a perfect disguise. Communication was key, and secrecy their language. Phantom secure blackberries, the choice of the criminal elite, carried their whispers across the city. Sultani, known in the digital shadows as unconfirmed and run amok, led a network where anonymity was the shield against prying eyes. Scattered across Sydney, safe houses stood silent, their walls guarding more than just secrets. Here, the syndicate hoarded their tools of trade, Drugs, guns, ammunition. A cache of chaos, ready at a moment's notice to unleash havoc on the streets.
Michael Davy, known in the circles of the rebels' bikey gang as Ruthless or the Prince of Penrith, bore the marks of allegiance inked into his skin. Yet, whispers of his intent to sever ties with the bikey brotherhood murmured through the underworld. Davy had long been a blip on the police radar, his youth marred by the glare of suspicion. As he faced the prospect of a trial for drug supply, the tattoos that once spoke of undying loyalty now seemed to weigh heavy on his soul. March 2016, the clock hands aligned and midnight silence was shattered. A block from Nepian Hospital, a high-end vehicle emerged from the darkness. Five shots pierced the night, and Michael Davy fell his body surrendering to the cold embrace of the pavement. Calls flooded the emergency lines, the reports unanimous, gunshots, a fleeing car, a man down. The authorities, swift to respond, found a scene that would haunt the bravest of souls. Michael Davy, the ruthless rebel, lay face down, his life's blood seeping into the ground. Despite their efforts, the wound was a herald of the end, Davy's fight was over. In the driveway of a home, a life was extinguished. Michael Davy, once a figure of notoriety, now a name added to the list of the fallen. His departure from this world as violent as the life he had led. Mehmet Yilmaz, a name entwined in a web of debt and danger. Rumours swirled of a $20,000 dispute, a sum that cast a long shadow over his fate. At the heart of this conflict, a Sultani associate and a figure known in the biker world as Eric the Wolf, Erkan Keskin, a high-ranking member of the Lone Wolf Bikey Gang. The debt, a chain that bound Yilmaz to a destiny he could not escape. The streets whispered of the tension, the unease that comes when money and honour collide in the unforgiving world of gang allegiance. September 9th, 2016. Outside the home of Hayan Chandab, a self-proclaimed member of the Comanchero gang, the assailant showed no hesitation. Gunshots rang out. Yilmaz, caught in the crossfire of debts and disputes, lay in the gutter, his life slipping away. His fiancée, a silent witness to the brutality, watched as the man she loved was struck down. The community, once a haven of suburban peace, reeled from the impact. But for Yilmaz, the end had come swiftly. In the aftermath, questions lingered. About debts, about loyalty, about the price of life in the shadows of the underworld. The ripple effect of Mehmet Yilmaz's murder reached the corridors of law enforcement, prompting decisive action. Strike Force Estop was born, a concerted effort by the State Crime Command's Homicide Squad and the gang squad Strike Force Raptor. Inside the Olympic Park unit, a place Sultani and Munchizada called home, listening devices were covertly installed their silent presence an invisible witness to the conversations within. Beyond the walls of their sanctuary, Sultani's movements were shadowed by technology's gaze. A GPS tracker discreetly placed transformed his Subaru WRX into a beacon for justice. Each journey, each rendezvous, meticulously logged by the vigilant eyes of Strike Force Estop, a step closer to unravelling the tapestry of crime that Sultani and his crew had woven. As the evening of November 16th unfolded, the city's network of CCTV became an unwitting chronicler of a sinister plot. At precisely 7.42pm, Danishia, Sultani and Munchizada were captured departing their stronghold embarking on a mission that would seal the fate of Pasquale Barbaro. Their steps were measured, their intent clear. The Audi, a ghost car in the urban tapestry, 
was their vessel of vengeance. Munchizada, Sultani and Baines melded into its shadows. While Danishia remained the sentinel, the roving beacon in the night. In a choreographed maneuver, Munchizada positioned the WRX with lethal precision. Baines, shrouded in the back seat, his hand steady on the 45 Colt pistol, awaited the signal. Four shots shattered the calm, a deadly overture to the chaos that ensued. Barbaro, wounded yet defiant, sought refuge in flight, but the hunters were unyielding. CCTV bore witness to Sultani's grim determination as he emerged from the Audi. His weapon an extension of his will. The chase was brief, the conclusion foregone. Barbaro fell and Sultani, ever the finisher, delivered the coup de grace. Five bullets, each one a punctuation mark in the sentence he'd written for his victim. In the seclusion of a distant park, the assassins regrouped. The Audi, now a liability, was consumed by flames, the petrols roar a pyre for their sins. The night reclaimed them as they vanished, their dark deed etched into the annals of the city's underworld. In the wake of Barbara's murder, the gears of justice began to turn with renewed urgency. Strike Force Osprey was announced, a dedicated task force set to unravel the threads of eight underworld murders, a grim tapestry that included the lives of Barbro, Davy and Yilmaz. Amidst their investigation, a striking detail emerged. Sultani's car, a silent witness to his grief, was tracked to the grave of his mentor, Joe Antoon. Perhaps seeking solace or perhaps affirming his resolve. Two weeks after the inception of Strike Force Osprey, Sydney witnessed a coordinated display of legal might. Thirteen search warrants were executed in a sweeping police sting with the epicenter at Olympic Park. Officers from Strike Force Osprey joined forces with their counterparts from Strike Force Raptor. A unit with a year-long history of probing the Burwood chapter of the Rebels Outlaw motorcycle gang. Together, they descended upon their targets with the precision of a well-oiled machine. In a series of rapid maneuvers, the law closed its grip on Sultani and his cohorts. Siar Munchizada, Joshua Baines and Mirweiss, each member of the syndicate found themselves ensnared in the net that had been cast wide across the city. As the dust settled on the sting, a series of secret trials commenced, shrouded in the veil of judicial prudence. Non-publication and suppression orders wove a web of silence, ensuring the proceedings remained cloaked from the public eye since September 2018. Three years after the echoes of gunfire faded into memory, the silent whispers of encrypted messages finally spoke. Detectives, through tenacity and skill, pierced the veil of secrecy that shrouded the BlackBerry phones, unveiling the damning communications of the gang members. Abuzar Sultani, known in the underworld as Abs or Boss, faced the reckoning of his deeds. His voice, once commanding in the shadows, now resounded in the halls of justice, confessing to a litany of lives taken. Sultani's fate was sealed, the ledger of his crimes tallied by the hand of the law. 1. For the murder of Nikola Serbin, a young life extinguished in its prime, Sultani received 20 years in jail. 2. The disappearance of Mark Easter, a comrade turned victim, culminated in a guilty plea and a body found discarded, marked by four shots from a 22 caliber pistol. 3. The trio of murders, Michael Davy, Mehmet Yilmaz and Pasquale Barbaro, earned Sultani three consecutive life sentences without parole, a testament to the gravity of his mindless killing spree. Siar Munshizada, a name linked to each of these tragic ends, joined Sultani in a life sentence, his freedom forfeit to the hands of time. Josh Baines, whose actions sealed Barbaro's fate, was condemned to 36 years behind bars. Mirwais Danishyar, the accessory to the unfolding horror, was meted out 15 years, 
his role in the prelude and aftermath acknowledged by the court. The heinousness of the crimes lies in the offender's callous contempt for human life, so extreme that the community interest in retribution, punishment, community protection and deterrence can only be met through life sentences. The court's adjourned. As the gavel's echo fades, the city breathes a sigh of relief. The syndicate that once cast a long shadow over Sydney's streets is no more. The men who orchestrated the terror have been called to account, their reign of fear replaced by the silence of a cell. Crime Tunnel, where the stories are real, the crimes are shocking and the truth is paramount. If you do the crime, be prepared to do the time. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and we'll see you in the next video.